Hi everyone, this is Glenda Ganzon and welcome to my Human Anatomy and Physiology class. And for today's video, I'm going to discuss the anatomy and physiology of the urinary system. Kick. The urinary system, which is also known as the renal system, produces, stores, and eliminates urine, the fluid waste excreted by the kidneys. So the kidneys make urine by filtering waste and extra water from the blood. Urine also travels from the kidneys through two thin tubes called ureters and fills the bladder. And when the bladder is full, a person urinates through the urethra to eliminate the waste. The urinary system is susceptible to a variety of infections and other problems including blockage and injuries and this can be treated by a urologist or another healthcare professional or who specializes in the renal system so the urinary system works with the lungs skin and intestines to maintain the balance of chemicals and water in the body adults eliminate um, about 27 to 68 fluid ounces that is equivalent to 800 to 2000 milliliters per day based on a typical daily fluid intake of 68 ounces and that is 2 liters. Other factors in urinary system function include fluid loss through perspiring and breathing. And in addition, certain types of medications such as diuretics that are sometimes used to treat high blood pressure can also affect the amount of urine in a person, produces and eliminates. And some beverages such as coffee and alcohol can also cause increased urination in some people. I will be discussing the function of the urinary system. So the function of the urinary system are as follows. First is for filter. Every day, kidneys filter gallons of fluid from the bloodstream. Another function is the waste processing. The kidneys then process this filtrate allowing waste and excess ions to leave the body in urine while returning needed substances to blood in just the right proportion the third function is for elimination although the lungs and the skin also play roles in excretion the kidneys bear the major responsibility for eliminating introgenous waste toxins and drugs from the body also it functions for regulation. The kidneys also regulate the blood's volume and chemical makeup so that uh, the proper balance between water and salts and between acids and bases is maintained. The fifth function of the kidney or the urinary system is regulatory function. And by producing the enzyme which is called renin, they help regulate blood pressure and their hormone erythropoietin stimulates red blood cell production in the bone marrow. And the last function is what we call as the conversion. Kidney cells also convert vitamin D to its active form. In the following slides, I will be discussing the different organs of the urinary system. The urinary system consists of two kidneys, two ureters, a urinary bladder, and a urethra. The kidneys alone perform the functions just described and manufacture urine in the process, while the other organs of the urinary system provide temporary storage reservoir for urine or serve as a transportation channels to carry it from one body region to another. The kidneys, which maintain the purity and constancy of our internal fluids, are perfect examples of homeostatic organs. These small dark red organs with a kidney bean shape lie against the dorsal body wall in the retroperitoneal position, which is beneath the parietal peritoneum in the superior lumbar region and they extend from the T12 to the L3 vertebra. Thus, they receive protection from the lower part of the rib cage. 
and because it is crowded by the liver, the right kidney is positioned slightly lower than the left. An adult kidney is about 12 cm or 5 inches long or 6 cm or about 2.5 inches wide and 3 cm or 1 inch thick about the size of a large bar of soap. Atop each kidney is an adrenal gland which is part of the endocrine system is a distinctly separate organ functionally and a transparent fibrous capsule encloses each kidney and gives a fresh kidney a glistening appearance. A fatty mass which is the peritoneal fat capsule surrounds each kidney and acts to caution it against blows. The renal fascia which is the outermost capsule anchors the kidney and helps hold it in place against the muscles of the trunk wall. And the outer region, which is light in color, is the renal cortex. Deep in the cortex is a darker reddish-brown area, which is the renal medulla. The medulla has many basically triangular regions with a, a strip appearance, which is the renal or medullary pyramids, which broader base of each pyramid faces toward the cortex wall uh, its tip the apex point toward the inner region of the kidney the pyramids are separated by the extension of cortex like tissue the renal columns medial to the helum is a fat basin like cavity the renal pelvis which is continues with the ureter leaving the helum extension of the pelvis uh, which is what we call as the calyces form cup shaped areas that endorse the tips of the pyramid and collect urine which continuously drains from the tips of the pyramids into the renal pelvis the adrenal supply of each kidney is the renal artery which divides into segmental arteries as it approaches the helum and each segmental artery gives off several branches called interlobar arteries at the cortex medulla junction interlobar arteries give off accurate arteries which curve over the medullary pyramids and small cortical radiate arteries then or branch of the arcuate arteries and run outward to supply the cortical tissue another organs of the urinary system are the nephrons and they are structural and functional units of the kidneys each kidney contains over a million tiny structures called nephrons and they are responsible for forming urine. One of the main structures of the nephron, glomerulus, is a knot of capillaries. Another one of the main structure in the nephron is the renal tubule. The close end of the renal tubule is enlarged and cup-shaped and completely surrounds the glomerulus and it is called the glomerular or Bromance capsule. The inner layer of the capsule is made up of highly modified octopus-like cells called podocytes. Podocytes have long branching processes called foot processes that intertwine with one another and cling to the glomerulus. As the tubule extends from the glomerulus or the glomerular capsule, it coils and twists before forming a hairpin loop and then again becomes coiled and twisted before entering a collecting tubule called the collecting duct, which receives urine from many nephrons. And this is a part of the tubule that is near to the glomerular capsule. The loop of Henle is a hairpin loop following the proximal convoluted tubule and after the loop of Henle, the tubule continues to coil and twist before the collecting duct and 
This part is called the distal convoluted tubule. Most nephrons are called cortical nephrons because they are located almost entirely within the cortex. And in a few cases, the nephrons are called juxtame ciliary nephrons because they are situated next to the cortex medullary junction and their loops of Henle deep deep into the medulla. The afferent arteriole which arises from a cortical radiate artery is the feeder vessel. The afferent arteriole receives blood that has passed through the glomerulus and they arise from the efferent arteriole that drains the glomerulus. Next to the kidneys are the ureters. The ureters do play an active role in urine transport. And the ureters are two slender tubes, each 25 to 30 centimeter or 10 to 12 inches long and 6 millimeter or 1 fourth inch in diameter. Each ureter runs behind uh, the peritoneum from the renal helium to the posterior aspect of the bladder, which it enters at a slight angle. Essentially, the ureters are passageways that carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder through contraction of the smooth muscle layers in the or in their wall that propel urine into the bladder by peristalsis and is prevented from flowing back by small valve-like folds of bladder which is the mucosa that flop over the ureter openings and next to it is the urinary bladder the urinary bladder is a smooth collapsible muscular sac that stores urine temporarily it is located retroperitoneally in the pelvis just posterior to the symphysis pubis and the the trosser muscle and the um, transitional epithelium both make the bladder uniquely suited for its function of urine storage the smooth triangular region of the bladder base outlined by these three openings and it is called the trigon where infections tend to persist. The bladder wall contains three layers of smooth muscle collectively called the, the trosser muscle and its mucosa is the special type of epithelium, transitional epithelium. And next to it is the urethra which is a thin walled tube that carries urine by peristalsis from the bladder to the outside of the body. At the bladder, urethral junction which is a thickening of the smooth muscle forms the internal urethral sphincter, an involuntary sphincter that keeps the urethra closed when the urine is not being passed. A second sphincter, the external urethral sphincter is fashioned by skeletal muscle as a urethra passes through the pelvic floor and is voluntarily controlled. The female urethra is about 3 to 4 cm or 1.5 inches long and its external orifice or opening lies anteriorly to the vaginal opening. And in male, the urethra is approximately 20 cm or 8 inches long and has three named regions which are the prostatic membranous and spongy or the penile urethra or urethra and it opens at the tip of the penis after traveling down its length.